is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord, our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. God Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves, that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us turn unto the altar of God and make an examination of consciences. And now I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you, most loving Father. Have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life to improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And you will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Spirit of the Lord fills the word world is all-embracing and knows what man says. Alleluia. Therefore, no one who utters wicked things can go unnoticed, nor will chastising condemnation pass him by. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, have mercy on us. As you descended upon the disciples in the upper room, so now once again descend on your Lord church. Inflame our hearts, enlighten our minds, and purify our souls. For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the solemnity of the Pentecost, we take the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At the sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astonished, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Syria, near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. Therefore wait for me, says the Lord, for then I will change and purify the lips of the people. Alleluia. That they all may call upon the name of the Lord, to serve them with one accord. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home, shed a ray of life and light divine. Come, Father of the poor, come, source of all our store, come within our bosoms, shine. You of comforters the best, you the soul's most welcome guest, sweet freshmen here below. In our labors rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours, and our inmost being filled. Where you are not, we have not, nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour your dew, wash the stains of guilt away. Mend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, 
guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore, in your sevenfold gift descend. Give them virtue, sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them the joys that never end. Alleluia. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one through its many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free people, and we were all given to drink of the one spirit. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, who sins you forgive are forgiven then, and who sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Bethlehem was God with us. Calvary was God for us. Pentecost is God in us. Words spoken by Robert Baer, a writer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters gathered on this solemnity of Pentecost. The solemnity of Pentecost celebrates the birth of the Christian Church. It is a time when the Holy Spirit 
descended upon those who had gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem. The term Pentecost comes from the Greek word meaning 50, and it is observed 50 days following the resurrection of our Lord and 10 days following his ascension. According to our faith, we believe in one God, in three divine persons. This is what we know as the Holy Trinity. God the Father, the creator of all things. God the Son, the redeemer and regenerator of the world. And God the Holy Spirit, who edifies the church and sanctifies believers through its breath. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was with God in the beginning. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 12, we read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. The Holy Spirit is known in Judaism as Ruach, or the very breath or wind of God. He is also known in the Old Testament as the Elohim, or the sevenfold Spirit of God. In the Old Testament, we find the Holy Spirit came unto a select few with the divine gifts for the purposes of providing not only wisdom and leadership, but most importantly, prophecy. One of the prophets of the Old Testament, Joel, prophesied over 500 years before the Pentecost when he said, And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Peter was to remind all of this prophecy when he spoke to the crowds on that first Pentecost as found in the book of Acts. In the New Testament, the revelation of the Holy Spirit began with Jesus, he was the unique bearer of the Spirit. The Spirit was present at Jesus' conception, as foretold by the Archangel Gabriel in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 35, and was to descend upon Jesus in the form of a dove at his baptism. Jesus was to be guided and empowered by the Spirit through his public ministry which included the miracles of healing, as well as the preaching and teaching of the good news. It was at the Last Supper that Jesus promises his disciples that the Spirit would soon be with them, to protect them as a comforter, and to help them remember and testify everything that he had taught them while he was with them. I'd like to share with you but two thoughts of the truth of the Holy Spirit on this solemnity of Pentecost. The first truth is that the Holy Spirit empowers all of God's people. The prophecies of the Old Testament and the promises of Jesus concerning the Holy Spirit were fulfilled on that first Pentecost. At that time, God did pour out his spirit on all those gathered as prophesied by Joel. The spirit of God would be among them. The spirit of God would bring unto all of them various gifts for the purposes of edifying the church and sanctifying the believers. On that first Pentecost, the outpouring of the spirit caused those who had gathered to speak in different tongues of all the known languages of the world. 
This would give them the ability to preach in different languages as they were to become the bearers of the good news of Jesus. Prior to Jesus' ascension, he tells them, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and all of Judea, and Samaria, and unto the ends of the earth. The second truth on this Pentecost is that the Holy Spirit leads individuals. The New Testament tells us of the story of that first Pentecost, and it continues to the present day. We learn that the Holy Spirit guides and brings new life to its members who form the one body of Christ. Jesus teaches us in the Gospel of John that the Holy Spirit will come into the hearts of the believers. My dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit imparts different gifts to individuals who seek God to better serve God and His people. He assists them in prayer and worship. He transforms believers into being reborn persons who bear the gifts of the Spirit. As Paul declares, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. And it is the Holy Spirit who creates a new family of God, a new fellowship of man with each other, which is called the church. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the one question that puzzles many people about the Holy Spirit is how do we know when the Spirit is present? The Holy Spirit cannot be defined or understood by logic or reasoning in the mind of man, but can only be known by the grace of God in a sincere heart and in one who trusts the words of Jesus, the anointed one of God. It can be said that when Christ is not Lord, the Spirit is not at work in the individual. And when the Spirit is present, it is those who declare that Christ is Lord and works among the believers. The major work of the Holy Spirit is to magnify God's love for us in our hearts, that one may have a new and better understanding of the depth of God's love for us. As we learn and share this illumination of God's divine love, each believer is sanctified, made holy, and the church in general is edified or enlightened. Together, the individual and the church are bound together by one Spirit, one Lord, who is the giver of life as we proclaim in the Nicene Creed, and in the end is the one body of Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, he will not speak on his own. He will take from what is mine and give it to you. Alleluia. and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hand for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the benefit of the Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, Comforter and Advocate, sanctify our gifts. Guide us in truth defend us from evil, and enrich us with grace. For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. 
Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, you sent the Holy Spirit upon the apostles to establish your church, completing the Paschal mystery and revealing your plan of salvation in Christ. To who day we celebrate the birth of your whole church, through which the Holy Spirit unites all generations and all faithful people who profess in one voice the true who want on faith. Therefore, we join with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotted sacrifices, which we offer up to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all who present to faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially for our nation, who live, suffer, and die for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. all moments so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you.
in like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the Son of Faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal bliss. Number us, O Lord, in their company, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, 
and by the intercession of, and of the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused from my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May I at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you, my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, our Comforter, through this Holy Eucharist, grant us a new vision and a new counsel, new wisdom and fresh understanding, the revival of our piety and the renewal of our fortitude, so that we may go forth from this place, faithful in service and fruitful in deeds. Establish us in the knowledge of God and in the fear of the Lord, that we may see the kingdom of heaven upon the earth. For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifices offer. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you. Most Holy Trinity, grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may it become effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life of the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. and sisters, I welcome you again as we celebrate the solemnity of the Pentecost, the descent upon the Holy Spirit. It is my hope and prayer that you all be renewed by the Spirit of God, that you may come to know the love that Christ has for us through the indwelling Spirit that is within us. And so, Again, I thank you for sharing with us. We will conclude this morning service with the offering of prayer for the intentions for our sick and for our own personal intentions. And we will offer also a prayer for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed loved ones. May God be with all of you until we come together again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 